<laughs> you complained that the zombie show became a zombie show. There wasn't a single fucking zombie in that episode. Not one. I, what I said was that the zombie show became The Walking Dead. They're out looking for supplies and they're met with danger. What do you think you do during a zombie apocalypse? What are you talking about? That's a the the gambit is supplies, <laughs> sir. A fight for survival. That's all there is. That's the only storyline. No, the show has proven that there's been plenty of interesting veins and arteries that you could explore. I imagine it'll lean heavily on flashbacks. I mean, half the series so far through four episodes has been flashbacks. But you you just. You just don't want to be the guy that likes to admit he likes a zombie show. It's okay. It's I, all right. It's okay. I, I don't like it. how you're framing me. I don't like that this is how this is going. I've watched all four episodes at the appointed time. I'm obviously invested in the show. I just Yeah, the, but you the, don't want to admit the last of the shows was the weakest of the of the four, but that's okay. We've got a sample of four and yeah. they they've made three quarters of them have been really good. Yeah, I'm with you. Three of them have been absolute dynamite, I think. And uh, and four was the weakest one, but at, at a certain point, you have to move along the zombie apocalypse, right? There's right. a story to tell about that. You're too. right. You're, they made the bold choice in in episode three. The bold choice was gay love story. In episode four, is no zombies. Again, no zombies. They're in trouble, but no zombies. It's it's an interesting decision to greenlight a zombie show, considering how famously The Walking Dead fell apart, and. For the first couple of seasons, The Walking Dead had seemingly mastered the art form of zombie apocalypse But but you say had fallen apart, Mike, but they had whatever it was, six or seven good seasons. It's an enormous run, and then they held on too long. They held on way too long. I think if you look at the project's entirety, you would say it's more bad than good, which is incredible considering it was easily the biggest show in America. During I, its I, w- I wouldn't say what you're saying. I think it was more good than bad, but about half fell apart at the end. Man, and, and people you, got tired of the same storyline again and again and no advancement. In well, I, also, they they leaned on the device of, inevitably, during a zombie apocalypse, you're going to lose a few characters. But I think there was a certain threshold that they walked through pretty early on that there was just no coming back from. You, they, they lost too many characters that people cared for, I thought. Ultimately, now Last of Us can survive that because there's right now two central characters. But uh, we'll see how, how it builds out. I the, the good thing about The Walking Dead falling apart so famously was Last of Us has a pretty good idea, as does the audience, of where The Walking Dead went wrong. So it would be insane to replicate the same mistakes. But it's a it's a smart show, and I would say that because do you know the degree of difficulty on trying to pull off the gay love story for an hour and 20 minutes? It's not just that. It's a, it's a production value. What I love so much about HBO shows, and I, I, I know that this, was, this project was greenlit before the merger with Discovery, and it seems as though Discovery, when they got in there, they're just trying to clear the books for an eventual merger. And if you listen to people... It might be Comcast, NBC Universal. We'll, we'll see what ends up happening there. But they've really scaled back their ambition. Um, the DC Films unit is, is probably going to be the the ambitious arm. The HBO Max do. stuff is going to get diluted inevitably as they cut seventy percent of their staffing, and the content's going to get worse because what you see in the credits after The Last of Us is holy shit! A lot of people yeah. are working on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it it, it seems like a, a huge budget Hollywood motion picture, but this is a throwback to the previous regime where ambitious was uh, ambition was the standard, and it I jumps off the screen the, the 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 production value in it, and I really hope that HBO sees the value in that and decides to greenlight more ambitious projects because it's been a fantastic watch so far. But the thing is, like HBO, I wonder how much longer they will have the brand credibility of if the show airs on that platform. You trust that it will be good because one of the things that's happened with this merger is that they are it is starting to erode. Uh, CNN is a vastly different product 18 months on from when they took over. It's unrecognizable, and it's not just because Trump isn't president. It is totally different in tone. 
it, it's almost as if the conservatives still get the marching orders that CNN is bad. CNN is not what it used to be. In that right, respect. right. It, it, it's changed ideologically. They're trying to play more down the middle. Um, but a lot of things have changed about that place, and even down to the fact that they have live sports now on HBO Max. Uh, U.S. soccer matches are all airing on HBO Max, and you know, presumably it will play a role in the next NBA TV deal if they even continue it because the sort of ethos of that place has completely changed, and I wonder how much longer it had. All right, here's a new show on HBO Let's check it out because it's HBO. Like how much longer that lasts? I think that in the corporatization of content that the best would get affected that way first and heaviest. And you will notice the dilution already because when you're scanning through HBO Max, I can tell what's discoveries. It's not as good. It's just it's there and it shouldn't be among the rest of the content because uh, they're dumbing it down. They're making it worse and they can't help but do so because they're not HBO. It's a little heartbreaking because when you think about the quality of content, these entities that merge put out uh, individually. You have HBO, you have uh, Turner, we'll lump TNT, TBS out there together. You have CNN and you have Discovery Channel. I think even... <laughs> I, I think it's fair to say that by a wide margin, Discovery put out the worst content with the lowest production standard. And yet this merger happens. And because of that lack of ambition, their profit margins are way better than everybody else's. And they get to call the shots. So you have the least ambitious, least creative uh, entity. Most, in, most interested in making money. Right. Making all the decisions for historically some of the more ambitious in their specific genres uh media entities there have been and it's a little heartbreaking that for all that ambition you know 90 day fiance and family swap and whatever the hell comes in and says okay we're not going to green light the next succession it's it's it's, it's a bummer i mean what that's that's what was always going to happen right we actually got to experience something pretty cool from about 2010 to 2022 no, and a before quarter. that the sopranos before that no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying specifically like streaming the way that streaming it was a race to getting customers so all of these entities were spending crazy amounts of money at a loss to just get customers through the door get renewing credit cards and last year wall street said all right you've had your fun enough we're going to start making money now. And so all these products have had to make decisions. Netflix has an advertising model, and Warner Brothers Discovery took over HBO Max, which everyone loves. And a lot of these entities are going to change drastically. I need to apologize to the audience because we've merely been filibustering here, talking HBO, waiting for a late-arriving Greg Cody to stumble up the stairs in a hurry, a bit breathless, and take out his computer and join us on what is always a Greg Cody Tuesday. Good morning. Your microphone is not yet on, but oh. that is a perfect start for Greg Cody today. <laughs> Do we know if Stugatz has arrived at the Super Bowl? I'm a little worried about everything that's happening that's Stugatz related. I saw a flight, I, I saw an itinerary that got into Arizona at midnight last night, which means he's got to be, that's 3 a.m. our time, which means he's got to be up a couple of hours later if there were no flight delays in a turbulent time to fly. I got a text at 5 a.m. this morning, boots down in H-Town. Okay, um, so he's uh, <laughs> he is uh, on the connector, or he, he really does think that the Super Bowl is in Houston. We haven't really said Arizona on the air in quite some time, so I think he did have to be reminded. But uh, I am hopeful that Sugatz is making his way to wherever he needs to be. Well, now that Greg Cody has arrived, we can officially begin the local hour. And what I wanted to talk to you about, Mike, because you were there last night, and Duke, it's just weird. So uh, it was witty, by the way. Shashevsky got out at just the right time. It is strange to see Duke lose games this season already by 20-plus points. They were never in the game against Miami because, as Jim Beheim says, Miami has bought itself a team. <laughs> yeah. And he apologized. But, but, I mean, he's not wrong. No, he is. He I mean, is. I mean, My, Miami, here, here's – and I know I'm a huge homer. and I've, He's not and, wrong, Mike. No, My, he is. He is. He is because – to, to say that Miami is successful now because of NIL with basketball is a fallacy because this is a team that was totally undone by the Adidas scandal. Totally. And that's 
It, it even had me, who well, now I love Jim Laranega, like a peepaw. But a couple of years ago, <laughs> I wanted him gone. That that Adidas scandal and the la uh, the lack of scholarships really, really <laughs> You, you love him like a peepaw. Put, put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Lebitard Show. Uh, I should say uh, an Abu because he is La Danyaga after all. <laughs> so I love him like an Abu. Mike's Cuban. Why did he say peepaw? Like, where did that come from? Well, it's because I project. I have to remind myself that Larenega is La Danyaga. So, but I'm also half not Cuban. <laughs> so. Yeah, but the part that's Cuban in you is more than the part never, that's not Cuban I never in you. knew my abuelo. But I you never can still knew my say abuelo. Who says peepaw? Nobody. It, I'm as white as they come. Do nice. white people say peepaw? Really people, getting, peep, I feel like people in the South say yeah, peepaw. We're south, really yeah. getting Three bogged Americans, yeah. down when all I was going for was a comedic value of saying peepaw, guys. Let's keep it moving. It was, okay. We're celebrating that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but, celebrating. yeah sure. but, this team won an ACC before NIL. Okay. To, to say that Miami's men's basketball program is new money when you have a pretty su uh, substantial sample of when they're not hurt by Adidas sanctions, that they are a regular tournament team, that they are well-coached, and they are a force to be reckoned with inside the ACC. Mike, you don't need to take it as an offense that a team is... It is offensive, Let, Dan. No, it's, it's ignoring not. history. No, it's listen, ignoring history. Here's why it's I mean, not Miami's not a perennial power, Mike. Like, they've no. made the tournament a handful of times, but they, they always get they've out in the first round. They've been a good ACC program under Jim yes, Larinaga. They've Agreed. been, really good, they've been really good for this... For this, for this men's basketball program, and it's all of its lack of history, the La Danyaga years have been but, the best years by but far. Mike, I, I think without – and you're more embedded on the numbers of this stuff than I am. You're also more of a homer about this stuff than I am, and uh, the sugar daddy John Ruiz tentacles reach around this program, and they have been good for many, many years – but right now, it seems to me, without doing any empirical math on this, it seems to me that there are about 25 programs that can get in the game of being serious about the top of college basketball, and Miami's now one of them, and they haven't been before. And so I think that's what Beheim meant. I don't think he should have been apologizing. He's apologizing because he, he stinks, but Miami's gotten in the big-time game, and they weren't before. Miami's never been in the money game. He's apologizing because people reminded him behind the scenes, number one, really bad look, and it seemed as though the ACC got involved because if you see his apology statement, he's like, I have full faith in the ACC and their ability to run a clean blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's because Jim Beheim, like every other major men's college basketball head coach, succeeded on the back of under-the-table payments. Whether it's him or one of his assistants, come on. Come on. For Jim Beheim to be holier than thou, Syracuse was really good for a really long time. They weren't paying players. Get out of here. Anybody that has a problem with NIL just hates that it's more above board, but why? Because are, why, Miami's NIL deals and basketball specifically, you know exactly Mike, where that money's but coming. Why from. are you insulted by the suggestion that hey, good program? You know how you get to great. You know how to get. You gotta pay for it. He's basically acknowledging Miami's at the party now. We've been at this party for a while, and now Miami's at why this party too. And there's there's because, more teams here now. It's more crowded it, it, for him it, because it intimates that it didn't happen before, it and did. all of a sudden they just plop down money and voila, there's a good, there's a good program. They they went to a Sweet 16. They won the ACC regular season and okay. conference. They did the double. Guys, they were like, on that trajectory. The, my point is, they were on that trajectory, and. It didn't stop because they didn't have NIL. It stopped because Adidas. But Mike, they would have been here. If I may, please, because they've been doing a version of this since Leonard Hamilton. This program can surprise and reach above expectations by occasionally getting to the Sweet 16. It is now expected from this Miami team Ooh, to get to, <laughs> to the Sweet 16 because they're one of the game, they're one of the programs in the money game, and it's okay. It just means that they have the money to keep Wong when when he's flirting with the portal. Right. Yeah. That Wong, who was here before NIL, reaped the benefits of NIL, and I think his career has been better for it. He's going to enter the NBA and the professional ranks at a at a weird age, and we'll see how. How that works out for these players that stay there over time. Uh, Nigel Pack was an all Big 12 performer. He comes into Miami, famously an NIL deal attached to that. 
baby food. Norm Chad O'Meer was at Arkansas State, Nicaraguan. You love him. I love him. He was great last night. He's one of my favorite players to ever don. Physically strong. So strong. Can't move him. He is one of my favorite players to ever don that jersey. He is so exciting. And you see, it's been a joy to watch his growth and development over the course of the season. He was popping threes last night. He is such a great college basketball player. I don't I don't think it's fair to say yet that Miami has the expectation of greatness every year because despite what they did last season, they were not ranked in the in but the preseason how, how about top last 25. Night? Not like how about now you're the Dukes in North Carolina, you beat them by 20 the last couple of seasons. Right. That that represents a shift that I, is not familiar in my lifetime. It's, right. it's it, Of course, Duke is Duke. They're on TV more than Leave it to Beaver reruns. <laughs> you you get the, the cable primetime ESPN slot, and you, you thump a prestige program like Duke. You're going to get a lot more attention. Then your road win at Clemson, which I'd maintain is a better, more impressive win. Miami's proven so far this season unbeatable at home. And it's great to see the students turn out that way. I think they're doing a great job of student engagement. And you see the seeds already growing and that tree bearing fruit. They need to learn how to win these close games on the road because there have been some epic collapses Cody, this season. Uh, you have lived in this market long enough to see several strong leaders try to resuscitate that program and make it feel like what Mike is talking about now. Does it have a chance to play for the championship? And, oh, shit, it's hard to play in their building. Right. That's never been the case at Miami. Right. Like, that's not a thing that exists, and it's where you can get the feel of what Duke has had. Man, they don't have any preordained holy right to be at the top of the conference like they were. It didn't right. even make sense that Krzyzewski could stay clean. Everyone else was cheating. He never got the cheater thing, but he got to beat all the cheaters without cheating. Laren Yeager has beaten Duke before. In fact, he's got a pretty good record against Duke at, at Miami. My, my point is that Miami can now be in a conversation of we beat North Carolina by 20. We beat right. Duke by 20. And it feels normal. That's and it's the not thing. a fluke. Right. Yeah. Like I, I went to the game last night, and it was kind of wild to watch the student section. They had a whole bunch of people ready to prevent a, a court storming. But there wasn't even the urge to. This is an unranked team. You beat Duke, and it felt normal. My first year at the University of Miami was Frank Haith's last year. It was the year before Jim Laranega took over. It was desperate. (laughs) When I tell you it was hopeless and desperate, dire to go to that arena. What is ah Frank Haith? (laughs) I know exactly what it means. It's a contribution. (sighs) Yes, it's a contribution. Hey, by the way, Panthers getting hot. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> One point out of the final playoff spot. Continue. 17 ah, Royce, home games ah. and 29 games. Roy's chest still hurts from the club. Yeah, I'm hurting. Happening there. I'm, I'm still hurting. But <laughs> I like to, to go from where the Hurricanes were in the final year of Frank Haith to feeling normal to beat Duke a decade later, this program did not exist for large swaths of the 70s and 80s. It has... No right to be this good. No one recognized Rick Barry last night. Right. And, and no it was, one. It was, Who's there? It was, yeah, they, they honored Rick Barry during a TV timeout. You say no right to be this good, but if you're in the money game and the choice is between you live in Syracuse in January or you live here. like But, this, that, but it's never it's never worked like but that. But it's always been the appeal. Right. It's always been what, what's been always sold is the idea of we've got to sell you our weather because we don't have an on-campus arena to celebrate you. We don't have a big program to celebrate you. All we can sell is our weather right but now they have both if i may that's where jim Beheim loses me because you got into this game yes you had some heritage over there you're a legacy school legacy power but duke and syracuse new york how do you think they maintain being good how do you think come on well, they cheated. They, they cheated just like every other great program in amateur sports cheats they cheat Miami has the bones. It feels to like be reckless a speculation. Now no, we're no, all no, cheating. No, 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 we're not even cheating. It's allowed right now. It is it's allowed. allowed. <laughs> yes, now we're all cheating, and we're the better cheaters. I mean, to Mike's point, Bayheim should get over that. Uh, well, but like, level, there's just more people Mike in the game pissed. now. They're pissed because it's a leveling of the right. playing field. Because before they could cheat yeah. more and get people away from the sunshine of Miami and come to yeah. Syracuse, New York. Now it's a level playing field, and you look at it as a business decision. I can make you know a hundred thousand dollars in Syracuse, New York, or a hundred thousand dollars in Miami. I'm gonna go to Miami, 
And they you, hate that. If you're going to cheat, cheat the right way. Cheat successfully. Stephen Ross tried to cheat, did it bad, cost them, the Dolphins a first-round draft pick. I take what Bayham said, Bayham said about Miami as a compliment. Bayheim. Bayheim. Not Thanks. an insult. That's not an insult. He just means that right now it's a free-for-all. Everybody, in a manner of speaking, to a degree, everybody is Everyone buying Everyone has players. a chance now. This is bullshit. That's what it's happening. But, it's but, exactly but what's again, happening. The, this program did not get invented out of thin air. It is not on the basis of a lack of success that preceded it. The Hurricanes were not 15th in the ACC for 10 straight years, and then all of a sudden, out of thin air, pops Nigel Pack and Isaiah Wong, and they can compete at a high level. Like they can actually, like they have competed before in the last decade. They won the double 10 years ago. Yeah. They, w- they were in a Sweet 16. They've been a double digit win program in conference for a long time. They've this been... didn't just come out of thin air. You don't have to look further than within the conference and see what's happening at Louisville. I think sanctions, particularly in basketball, can cripple a program. Louisville has more money than Miami. Louisville's NIL program is is outstanding. They are very organized. If you see what they're doing already in football, you'd realize that. But the Adidas thing happened, they've been crippled by sanctions, and it's a a program reset. And Miami had that. And for Jim Boeheim to say that they they just bought this program is being ignorant to that fact for Miami because they were on that trajectory to be a mainstay. uh, It may be jealousy or it may just be that uh, the guy was dominant until he got to 70 and over the last 10 years, everything has changed. And if you want to see how a game would pass someone by, go ahead and put them in the 70s uh, and then make it NIL and the whole right. world gets turned upside down. And now whatever his power has been at Syracuse, like that guy, that name is more associated with Syracuse than for me just about any name. How about Jerry McNamara? And it's because of... The fact that that college basketball program won and people didn't understand how it was winning. And over the last 10 years, they've been irrelevant and he hasn't wanted to retire. And now he's he's close. He's 80 and everybody wants him out and he's choosing his own exit. Right. But the whole the, the whole like how threatened do you imagine Jim Beheim feels? I mean, Larry Yeager is in his early 70s. I mean, he's an old coach, but he's. Never not been good at Miami, except for a couple of years ago when they had that one lull season, uh, and it was a really bad season. But other than that, Laren Yeager has relentlessly won as Hurricanes coach. What, what's happening now is better than usual, but it's not unusual. He has won pretty consistently in the ACC with Miami. Am I wrong? But, but, but Whittingham, you're going to have to go away into the penalty box uh, for three thin air references. I don't think we needed three thin oh, I thought it was going to be the double. Came out of thick air. Yeah. Mm. I mean, like, what, wow. what, I, I, we didn't need the thin air. Yeah, especially it, down here, there's a lot of humidity. The, there's no kind of air. air you need. Uh, uh, here, there it's is. Just, not this is what thin I dislike air. about you, Dan Levitard. You come around every time that they beat Duke, and you're like, what is this thing? When people like Witty and I have been out there in As the Whitty's, foxhole. Witty's first game of the year. Come on, what are we talking yeah. about? We've been in the foxhole. <laughs> Oh, Whitty's called I, several of well, those lean years. If if I may, okay, because uh, I do want this to feel good for you as a booster of the program who more and more infects what we're doing around here daily with your homerism and your boosterism uh, in a way that can be very annoying to the audience because they don't want to hear this much about really? your— How often your, have I been able to talk about Norm Chad O'Meara? Your beloved <laughs> I've University sent Dan a of text Miami program. Every morning, let me talk about baby food. Yeah. Please don't. Uh, yes, you have wanted to talk about baby food. It's also a good nickname. I would like that nickname, nickname if, uh, if I were a basketball player. Really? Who couldn't be moved. <laughs> I feel like you people outgrow that nickname at about age two. He's great. One and He's a half. The greatest Nicaraguan basketball player of all time already. And uh, yeah. it, it's been a joy to watch this team. We'll see what happens in the but tournament. Keep are, in mind, this team was at halftime leading over the eventual champion in the Elite Eight. Halftime. Halftime. That's right. They, they were they were a half they away. They totally fell apart in the second half. They, totally. One yeah. of the worst halves of basketball I've ever seen. Well, you from, remember from a you, Miami product. It's hard for you to retain the names because you watch all the games on mute. But do you remember Wuga Poplar and how he was oh, just Oh, yes, I fell in love with his steals for about 10 minutes. Right, right, right. He was just he didn't trust his shot at all. And the game turned when Kansas decided to Tony <laughs> Allen him. That's right. Just stand at the top of the key and shoot. We don't think you'll make it. Have you and watched him this season? Have you yes. watched him this season? Yes. Totally different player. That's not NIL. 
That's that's a great project. Development. That is a great project that Coach L took on, and he has made him into a dependable ACC basketball player. You're going to continue to be insulted by this? You're well, it's just every time we talk about – I understand. Miami men's basketball talk, and heaven help me if I want to talk about the women the way that I want to – it's just it doesn't move the needle, and our audience gets annoyed by it. So you have to do the thing, the Dan Lebetard thing, where okay, they were on ESPN, they pounded Duke. We're allowed to talk to them, and we're going to talk to them. We're going to talk about them through this prism of they're cheaters. They are not. This is above board. This program was on this trajectory. I did not say they were cheaters, well, uh, Mike. Why do you take all this so personally? Why because we... because it's insulting, and I fell victim to, to it. To, you? to Coach L. Beheim to did, Coach L. Beheim did not say they were cheaters. They said they bought a team. Well, and I think the the insinuation is there. Oh, come on. But there's he no could just be stating matter uh, of Mike, fact. NIL, they spent there, money in NIL, and now they have a better team. There's, right? there's a player there, hating for real. Mike, there's not. <laughs> it's above board and not out of thin air, Dan, all right? It's not. Accept it. I will tell you that with Miami's NIL deals, you know exactly where that money is coming from. And if you go to those players' social channels, you see that they're actually earning their money. There's all this ambiguity about a lot of people's NIL programs where you don't know what the hell they're doing. Miami, I'll give John Ruiz this much. He's he's dotted the I's and crossed the T's. It, it, everything so runs now it's through above compliance. The board. Now it's above board. It's not out of thin air. And T's and I's have been crossed. All right, oh. Whittingham, then celebrate it. Celebrate. How many games have you been to this year, Whittingham? One. All right, so he's accused me of checking in with Duke when they're on ESPN and they're, they're the centerpiece of the country, but... South Florida stinks at March Madness. South Florida hasn't had. Oh, I remember geez. last Not year. Not last year they didn't. Mike, this la- again. Mike, the television listen ratings to me. historically. Last never year, rated. last year. Jesus, 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 Chris so Cody. Learned. Learned. You know how many St. Francis basketball games I've been to? Two. But you just made you know dance why? pointedly. You said we're you, never in it. You know That's... why? You know why I've been to two? Because I found out this year that there are two St. Francis's. That's how there basketball. are. Yes, Brooklyn and PA. Josh Cohen, incredible player for St. Francis, PA. I see one of the best awesome <laughs> gifted big men. They'd be nowhere without him. I am a college basketball fanatic right now. What I was going to say is last year at about this time, Chris Cody, I remember him asking, up? are you telling me that the University of Miami is championship good? And we're like, yeah, they could beat anybody last year. They could beat anybody. It was more of an indictment on college basketball last year. Because no, but it, it was wasn't. Th- but it wasn't that they had a good basketball team. Yeah, they- but that I mean, Elite Eight taking it to Kansas for a half—that was surprising. Okay, and now, as now, they, now, as they try to make a leap, yeah, as they try to get into a conversation, do I have any of this wrong? When my assessment is, Mike, there are about twenty or twenty-five teams who can afford to take how good they already are and polish Legally it up afford. with money. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think you have that right. I, I would, I would reword it. I'd say right now there are about. It's a lot like last year. That there's about twenty-five teams, maybe more, that can win the championship this year okay. in that in that tournament. And I would say that Miami, in particular. Is well positioned because Coach Larinaga teams usually get better as the year progress. They have this, it's a cliche, but they do have great veteran guard play. <laughs> they do. They do. Zay Wong is like 28 years old. Oh, GP. <laughs> yeah. Experience backcourt. Yeah. I, I they have, to, and on. they're going to be a tough out. I need to stop you only, only because you mentioned experience guard play. And this is an actual exchange that I had last night with Stu Gatz because uh, four or five people heard the weekend observations and pointed out that Stu Gatz, who was going to his automatic of faking his way through the basketball analysis, started talking about FAU's basketball players. And he said they have a senior backcourt, and he named those basketball players. Who? Play for Western Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> and several people pointed this out, and I j- and I just wondered. So I sent it to Stu Gatz, and you know what he texted me back? Because three or four people sent it. Super Bowl week, Dano. <laughs> <laughs> I should mention to the audience that our schedule is going to be a bit disjointed this week. We're going to start a little later than we usually do, but we're going to be giving you a good deal more than we usually do as well because God bless football is on the ground in Arizona, allegedly at least half we know. Billy, Well, actually three quarters of Juju, Danny, Billy have arrived. Jessica is in Arizona, 
Andrew Hawkins is in Arizona. Amin is saying he's a bit hurt that Amin is not part of our Arizona coverage, as is Chris Cody and Tony. Both of them think that they should be in Arizona. Well, it's more so like, you know, we've gone on plenty of trips. It's more, I just am jealous and want to be out there. I, I believe our crew will do well, and I, it's not that like I should be there instead of them. It's just I want to be there. I saw a video of Danny just walking around Radio Row yesterday, and it just I just got insanely jealous. Dan, it's almost like when you fly first class and you can't go back to flying coach. It's like once me and Chris and, and Witty walk the halls of Radio Row, and now for us not to be there is tough because it's like, oh, you're going back to coach. Okay, sure, that's that. But I know what it feels like to be what, up this there. This is coach. No, no, of course not. This yeah. is that's, this is past first class. I don't know what past this business. No, 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 yeah. Tony. You know what? I can My say this. This week, this is coach. <laughs> Whoa! It's I Super Bowl week. How, how about premium economy? <laughs> it's Super Bowl for week. That? For this, this is, week, this, this is, is private, normally this is a private jet. This is normally yeah. a first class PJ. seat, but this week when they're at the Super Bowl, this feels like coach Dan. I just got to be honest with you. This is I didn't say that. This is Frontier Airlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't say oh, that either. Oh man! First time, first time back here in the economy in Frontier Airlines. Oh, I'm so sorry. I haven't been to a Super Bowl since Rex Grossman started in it. <laughs> Sexy Rexy. I, I want it. I want it for you. I want you to well, be there. We, we've only I, gone I, to two. Correct? I did utter the phrase. Nothing is stopping me from going to the Waste Management Open next year. That was something that I said. I thought maybe my hot whistle <laughs> stuff last year. It was great with Micah Parsons would have got me back there. But you know, it's all right. I'll work harder this but, year. But you know what? Everything was made up to me. I'm going to Utah in a couple of weeks. <laughs> me, me too. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Okay, there have been some errors made around here, admittedly. I, uh, I've i only been to two of these in Miami and Jacksonville because I hate it. It's too, too many. For, this is all your fault if you really want to yeah, get into if it. Yeah, if I should have, if I had just no. said, hey, we're going, I we can't go to the You just liked it better. <sighs> yeah. If someone hits a hole in one, I'll be watching on my TV because Dan needs someone there with him. Great. Right. We were, I, I, yeah, somebody to turn up the sound. Uh, so we were thinking, I. I, I'm I, happy we're here because who else would have figured out that Dan's power cord was unplugged just now? <laughs> <laughs> I imagine uh, Goddamn, 10 minute delay. I couldn't <laughs> plug something in. <laughs> I imagined us going to the Super Bowl and the Waste Management Open, even though I hate the Super Bowl. I don't know what happened there. Regardless, Stugatz is now headed there. And I fear, because I don't handle the money around here, I fear that Stugatz getting there costs so much that the rest of you can't go. He is staying in a castle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so God <laughs> in Houston, apparently. <laughs> so God bless football is going to produce allegedly content every day from there, but we don't know if he is there yet. Right. And we don't know if we'll be getting that content today. I imagine Billy will be enterprising enough to make some content. They'll, they'll get Gojo to come by, or he might just do 40 minutes with Danny. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, wow. either is, way. Is Jabba Chamberlain Jabba out there? Or his brother. <laughs> We're going to send him to a castle in Houston to do 40 minutes with Danny? That's right. <laughs> Actually, this was the right choice. I'm happy. I, <laughs> I honestly. Frontier Airlines. What, what I feel for Billy right now is just pure and unbridled secondhand anxiety. Yeah. Because I cannot, like, working with someone so unreliable and we're asking these questions, I imagine, like, he's landing on the ground. I got a, I saw a text yesterday from Stu Godfrey. He goes, I asked Billy for something and I heard the sigh despite his lack of response. So, uh, <laughs> Billy, Billy's on the struggle bus this week and I want to use this platform. I don't know if he can hear me. If he can, just know that I'm sorry. Rather literally. <laughs> And uh, I want to offer my help over the course of this week. Yeah. Whatever we can do to help, Billy, we're here for you. <laughs> you couldn't pay me to be Billy this week. <laughs> you couldn't. You couldn't. In fact, I'm actually happy I'm here and not there just because being around that would be such a trigger for me that I might not make it on the airplane. I'd be just cowering in a corner. You're happy on Frontier Coach now. That What has happened is you've taken inventory of your life and you have realized that this is a better place to be, even as Chris Cody and Tony have FOMO. Where's my complimentary beverage? Yeah. Actually, on Frontier, I think they charge you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They just throw it at your head. <laughs> Can I get a Coke and then it just comes no flying lid. across? No <laughs> lid. Just, there's a straw in it, thankfully. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was the saddest tray I've ever had on a flight. Oh, I wait, couldn't put a laptop there. Yeah, it's wait, it like comes the, down. It's like the size of my cell phone. It's a flat this tray. <laughs> it's a flat. flat it down. It it's barely enough for one little <laughs> sad drink. I shouldn't. I shouldn't do this, but they always warn us. Hey, man, just you never know who could be a not sponsor. Frontier. You never know who could be a sponsor. Just don't say brand names. But I will walk out on this company if Frontier <laughs> Airlines wants to sponsor us. I, this is my hill to die on. I will not be associated with that. But you get what you pay for. I'm we, gone. We will I'm not gone. tear up my so contract. Your, we, your money is no good here. I have Frontier it. I have it. I, I had Spirit written down, and I should have made a slash Frontier. Yeah. Any of those two brands, I'm sorry. My career is not going that way. Nothing kills my spirit more than Frontier. Might literally do so. I felt like that was a good joke. No. Yeah, good. I feel like Thank that was going to no, get no. the loser it game show sound. Yeah, it just got silence. Yeah, you looked at this, you stared at us. <laughs> I was like, someone's going to laugh. I'm going to hear a laugh. I was like, that's going to get somebody. <laughs> well, this is no. The thing, though. It's, I, I need to talk to the audience for a second because um, the Greg Cody show featuring Greg Cody. With. <laughs> the name has never changed. Featuring wouldn't fit in the logo. That's the main reason we said with. He is delightful for a number of reasons, but chief among them is Chris's relationship with his father, which I am like thrilled. Okay, now that my father's not around here so much anymore, I am thrilled to see the evolution of all of the hostilities in that relationship. At Moss, I remind you, a band was playing an emotional so song great. in in Greg Cody's honor, and on the side of the stage, Greg Cody was physically and violently wrestling his son with a stubborn reluctance to do anything that the producer asked him to do. And then admitted he was wrong after. Because he's a diva. That's a stunner. That is a stunner. But every year for many years, Greg Cody has been conducting in a living room that I believe has had the same paint since 1990. Maybe earlier. <laughs> 1980. I remember when you painted it. I think Christopher was a newborn. Well, I don't know if it's that old, but it's a beautiful mustard. Oh, no. <laughs> and it's haunted. Right. It, it feels haunted as he, I don't know. I need people to see this video and hear some of the sound. And I'm telling you, the Greg Cody show featuring Greg Cody is, is a treasure for this reason. Here is some of the sound. I want you to imagine, Chris, set the scene for me here. For people who are just on audio, you got a couch full of people uh, and it's family time. And Uncle Dick is there and he's bored out of his skull looking at the sky. <laughs> you, can make, you can make the argument Everyone's a little bored. <laughs> it was sold out. There is my favorite part of this clip is the hum that go, plays underneath it. I'm pretty sure it's Uncle Dick's death rattle. <laughs> it, they, it, they look. The people on that couch look like they're hostages. All of them. <laughs> that they are there against their will in this haunted, jaundiced room. It was a sellout, and we had a name sponsor for the first time and, in our history. And Greg Cody is up front with index cards, with note cards. And Who is the sponsor? Sears and Roebuck. He was wearing a jacket. How many jackets do you own? Two. I was wearing the other one. A <laughs> 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 jacket and jeans. And here, lest these people think that this was going to be a boring thing filled with stats. No, no, no. Here's showman Greg Cody, the commissioner, speaking to open the ceremonies. 16 weeks leading a dominant number. Weekly titles. Uh, this was a close race. Chip being the Maniacs eaten. had 5.66, including five solo. Chris's Critters had 4.84. Dick's Rough Riders 3.66. <laughs> Weeks later. And the Lobos 233 three, and Weeks Chicken 150. Right. Yeah. Uh, Chicken. So 566 <laughs> was one off the record of 6.66. Yeah. A dominant, uh, a dominant season in weekly titles as well. Fascinating. The minutiae. <laughs> now, yeah, it's, it's, it's the league. I mean, if you want 16 more minutes of that, check out this week's well, episode of the no, Greg Cody no, Show. What I, I want, can though. taste mustard in my mouth. <laughs> what I want is not anything other than what I'm assuming is always the edited out versions of your father insane with rage at you and you have to edit it out because it's not even becoming it's not great as content he it's, lost his cool there it's was just your dad pissed yeah. off there was one point in it where i i believe i just mocked him for because he's clearly reading everything he said like you would think in this thing like i could i can riff some i might read some stats but even his introduction is a written out thing and i just was like greg cody reading and it triggered him and he got really mad at me 
I'm ho- I'm I'm holding uh, 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 papers. But dad, do you realize and, that and reading off them? But dad, do you realize isn't it obvious I'm reading? Dad, I'm not mo- trying to hide it. But dad, most of the time when people are hosting events, even if they have a script, they're appearing, they're trying their hardest to sound natural. Right. Okay. Well, you know, last year I spent almost twenty thousand dollars on a state of the art teleprompter. It was in the shop. Okay. Next year it's going to be back. I'm going to have a teleprompter, and then you'll say reading off a teleprompter. I can't win. Bothered you, you? He bothered you with minutia too. He bothered you. They they bother you by critiquing. You're you're putting great care into this, and they're critiquing. Right. You. But like, you love the criticism too. That's part of the thing. It would not be like if we didn't mock you for this. Right. I feel like you would like it less. I know how much PFPI means to you and to the family, right. and that's why I put up with the mocking. By the way, our two new franchises were expanding from six to eight teams. Our two new franchises could not have been more eloquent in their uh, appreciation for being invited into the my league. five-year-old daughter. Yeah, and uh, Tati, Tatiana. <laughs> Chris, is- you should see how hard I had to fight for him to allow my daughter into this. I'm like, Dad, I didn't, I didn't want to have the difficult conversation with him of like, Dad, we don't know here. how many more of these does Graceland have? like do you have? So it's like, oh, no. It, well, I'm just saying, you no. never know how many do I have left. No, he actually said that about me. I, I'm just like, Dad, like this is a fun family thing. Like, how would we? Like, why would you exclude anybody from it? Graceland's old enough; she can circle. You know, hand right. her the sheet, two teams, circle one. All right. So next year we're going to induct uh, Jumpin' Charlie. He's going to be our ninth <laughs> member of uh, PFPI. Look at this, though. You've offended poor Christopher's critters. It took me a minute. Chris's critters. It it took me a minute to uh, to agree that it's okay to uh, anoint a five-year-old. Uh, and the reason is that uh, uh, Ruth's Raccoons, my, my late mother's team, was the precedent because she knew nothing, less than zero, about football, had less than zero interest in football, and would select the winning team based on which city she would rather what, live in or visit. What year was this uh, for the pro football, the, the PFPI gala? 1908. Right? This was the 27th. Uh, we've been a franchise since 1969, but there was about a 25-year gap before it was revived in 2004. That's not. What do you mean? It, no, there was the early were years fantasy in 1969. Well, like it, we're not talking about fantasy. In the 60s and 70s, it like was a, just my dad, my uncle, and my grandfather. It was three of them in it. Right. So my dad has like four championships from an era that there was, it was undocumented. There's <laughs> wow, no pre merger. He's, he's the it's Bill documented. Russell. So in the That's modern right. pre merger, in That's the right. modern era, me and my uh, my uncle have six titles each. And, and I my have four. And my dad has four, but right. he claims to be the all time champion With because nine. of these undocumented in the fifties. <laughs> right. That even my uncle Dick questions how like accurate they are. If you look at my Twitter site, it says nine time PFPI champion without exclamation because people know, you know, PFPI. It's a league. I mean, it's a national league. It's not a national league, but it it has the heft of one. Because Greg Cody loves this local hour being an totally uh, totally self involved descent into all things Cody. We had a ceremonial burying of his boat shoes after 20-something years. We did no such ceremony for something that Chris Whittingham lamented when it was lost. Greg Cody's famed Miami Herald notes column, Random Evidence of a Cluttered Mind, which was retired many years ago, morphed into a blog that Greg Cody has been running since people at the very beginning of blogs. A blog that is how old, or was how old, before um, you discontinued well, it now. recently. Yeah, right. but just recently. Thank you, Chris, for having the kind of romance I expected from you around this subject. <laughs> kind of we were building up to. It, it was very early on the, uh, on the, on the blog uh, uh, scale, and I've done it. I did it 18 years, and uh, the, the Big Lead website was kind enough to uh, acknowledge that uh, we were retiring it and gave it a nice write-up. So I appreciate that, thebiglead.com. A pioneer. Minutia. The random death that Greg Cody's happy about. Well, I am, and and we uh, we honored <laughs> the the memory of random evidence on my own podcast a couple episodes. We ago. We had an actual funeral. We did. And, <laughs> and, Dad, you want us to recreate on, the song? On, sing on, the song on the Greg Cody show <laughs> featuring Greg Cody. What was the song played for the played at the funeral? Please, the, the song. It was to the uh, it was to the tune of Amazing Grace, the standard classic. Yeah. You can imagine the words. Oh, no, amazing <laughs> blog, <laughs> how sweet thou art. And I don't remember the rest of it. It was basically exactly just much. Amazing Grace that he just replaced Grace with blog. <laughs> well, you know. 
God rest it. R.I.P. R.I.B. <laughs> rest in power. That's right. Rest in blog. Blog power. R.I.B.P. <laughs> I may bring it back. I'm like Brady. I never really retire. Resurrected? That's right. Bag check. Yes. <laughs>